I'm gonna break down how I made this video. Every once in a while I get an idea and it's a random idea and it's usually inspired by something I saw online or just a random thought in my head. This particular video was inspired by something I saw online and I've been seeing online for a while and I give credit where credit is due to the OG, the master, Daniel Schiffer. This guy's been doing this for such a long time and he gives such good tutorials on how he does everything and I absolutely love it and I couldn't wait to actually do one so today is the day. I've been doing product videos for a while and I do a lot in my house because lately I can't shoot outside and all my client work has been pushed. So I've had a lot of time to like experiment, do new things, try new techniques, and I actually love it. I'm making the best of this weird scenario where we're stuck at home. So for this product video, I decided to use a local seltzer. This seltzer is made by Dominion City, who normally make beer, and they've been making beer for a long time, great beer. Uh, and they just came out with this new, not just came out, but in the last year or so, they came out with this seltzer line, and it, it's fantastic. It's like a nice boutique set of soda waters, and I absolutely love them. So I decided to use the cool melon one because it's my favorite. Cause when do you ever get cantaloupe and cucumber in a soda? It's mind boggling. And another note is I always like to use local products if I can, I'm just doing a test video because why wouldn't you support somebody who could possibly support you back? If you get a big brand or big box product to test with, they're probably never going to see it. And you're not going to get any support. I would always recommend buying something and using something local because you support them, they support you, and it's gonna be a nice give and take relationship. And they're in the same city as you. So if they like it, they could contact you. You can meet up, you get a coffee, and I don't know, I'm a huge support local fan, so this is what you should do. I'm also gonna be shooting this entirely on the Canon R6, uh, just to test it out. And I'm not gonna use log, I'm gonna shoot straight out of camera. So let's see how the colors turn out, let's see how everything turns out, and this should be a fun day. So for this video, I decided on a pink background because A is all I had, pink or like a Tiffany blue. Um, I could also use black or white, but I thought that the can color, this like nice looking off pink salmon, I guess, would go really nice with this style of backdrop. I thought maybe these two together would go well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pink backdrop against the wall top of the table in pink as well to make it seem like it's a never ending pink background. So you always do what's called the hero shot first. That's your end shot. That's the shot that makes the video, you know, clinch the call to action, if you will. Now you do that shot first because if you're using products, you might run out. And the last thing you want to do is show your hero shot, your main shot with a half can, half bottle, half eaten piece of food. So I did that first. Okay, so we have our hero shot basically set up or like a main shot with the lighting. So. There's an ice light in the back. There's this LED panel here. There's the Aperture 120D uh, at almost full brightness. And then there's the Aperture MC at almost full brightness as well. I have the camera set to at least F4. And I think a very low ISO because I want to get the details in these particular shots. And I'm going to see what I can set up with the fruits that I bought. I cut up some cantaloupe and I cut up some cucumber and I'm going to make this my hero shot. So the raw ingredients with the can as the hero in the shots. I like to do slider shots in my videos and I always do these as my hero shots because I love that push in or pull out at the end. So for this particular example, I get all the things that go into the soda. So I got a cantaloupe, I got cucumber, and I got a whole bunch of the soda waters. I actually got six cans just in case. I probably need one or two, but you don't want to run out. It's the absolute worst because you got to get out, stop filming, go back to the store. Then what I did is I set up a nice scenario where it would look really appealing while showing what was in the product. So the cantaloupe I cut, uh, cucumber I cut nicely, and I put it on a nice little cutting board, and that's my hero shot. So I shot that first. I always shoot multiple angles as well, like back and forth, side to side, just to give me some options in post. Once the hero shot was done, I wanted to do some green screen things and you know get the fruit flying in the air. And to do that, I needed a green screen. Now I realized that the can and probably the cantaloupe had green in it. So if I had used a green screen, it wouldn't have worked because the green would have lumicated with the can. So perfect for me, I had blue tape and I just made a little backdrop. So the plan is simple. I'm gonna use this foam board that I have lying around. I'm gonna tape it with this blue tape. 
When you bring it to post, the computer will recognize that it's a blue screen and it will eliminate it from your background, giving you a solid, just single object. And in this scenario, it was great because then I can have these little floating pieces of fruit. Now, the second challenge was that I had to have the fruit floating. So how could I do that? I could have stuck a skewer in the bottom and rotated it on a simple platter, but I decided to use fishing line. And the best thing about the fishing line was that because it's so thin and so minimally visible that when I put it into the chroma key, I didn't even see it anymore. So I had to do no masking and it was a piece of cake. So I did that for the cucumber and I did that for the cantaloupe. The last shots I wanted to get were the fruit falling into the water. And normally you use a big acrylic tank. You use a large tank and you get the depth to get the fruit dropping down. But I don't have a tank like that. So I had to use uh, some old vases that we had and I had to push in really far with my camera. Put on the 70 to 200 and I got these actually pretty usable shots. I used the Canon EOS R6 and I used it at 120 frames per second. And it actually turned out really well, I think. And it's just a background anyway, so I love the way it turned out. So after I finished, I forgot one shot. So this is a good point. Shot lists are important because you get carried away, you think you're done, you take everything down and you realize you're missing one thing. So I had forgotten about the soda pouring shot and it's a, it's a pivotal part of the video. So what happened was I actually ruined the backdrop when I was doing the fruit drop shots. So I had to set it all back up again. If I had a shot list, I would have done those shots first and I would have come back and done the fruit dropping shots at the end because I knew they were gonna ruin the backdrop. So I'm not gonna go through the video edit with you. I'm gonna give you a link to Daniel Schiffer's video, which I learned from, and I always wanna give credit to people who do great things. And that video inspired me and that video helped me do this full video. So if you're interested in looking at the editing part, definitely go check his video out. I'll put it down below. So this is a great project to do. It took me about half a day to do the shooting, like minus setup, minus pickup, and then probably half a day to do the editing. So I shot one day, edited the next day, and it turned out really well, I think. Um, Let's watch it again and uh, thanks for tuning in.